Hi guys, it's Lindsay and welcome back to Blushing Pink Stitches. Um, today I'm going to be doing a review of my Lowry stand. Um, I had a couple of people ask me um, to yeah, make a video just telling them um, my thoughts on it, doing a little bit of a review, so I thought I would film that today. Um, so I bought the um, silver grey um, Lowry stand and I bought it from a website called Marie's Cross Stitch which is a UK based cross stitch website and I will leave a link down below. Um, the stand itself cost um, just over a hundred pounds and um, there was an offer on it on the time and there's still an offer on it now I believe. Um, so and then I also bought the L-shaped extender bar um, and that cost something like £33, I think. Um, so this is the box that, that it comes in. Let me flip that way around. Um, so, and then it comes with um, the instructions. Um, you, this comes in two parts, or like three parts. You have to um, attach this bar here to the bottom um, plate um, and then they include an allen key to do that it's all in the instructions it was a hundred percent straightforward um, took like two minutes to put together then you put this bar in here and that's it that's it basically um, so what it basically has is um, this little um, clamp here and take this thing off and then you can adjust the height of this so at the moment it's sort of down here i'm just come off camera a little bit um and you can adjust the height of it and put this pin in sort of where you want it basically um so depending on the height of the chair that you're sitting in and um, you can adjust the height like that this thing here allows you to move this so if you untwist this little particular lever it allows you to move it this way and this way and then obviously up and down and then you retwist it and to tighten it. Um, this is the clamp that it comes with. This is sort of like the standard clamp. So what you do is you just put that in the end here. Let me just undo this a little bit. There we go. And then tighten this and then that's basically um, on the stand. Uh, well, have I already got my extender clamp in? Uh, yeah, this is okay. This is the extender bar. This is a normal um, bar that it comes with. So you can see there's a difference in the length of the bar, and um, so that extends it. Um, so I bought the extender bar because I have quite a wide um, arm on my sofa, um, and it. I couldn't basically work with it um, with the normal um, bar that it comes with. Um, so like I said, this is the clamp. Uh, you clamp it onto the end like this. If I just move it around so you can see, um, it's got this bit um, underneath. This is where you would clip your um, cue snap in. I'll show you how that works properly um, in a minute. Um, and then this kind of puts the lever down so that it holds your um, frame or Q-snap or hoop or whatever it is that you're using um, nice and tightly um, and then you just pull it back up again to, to loosen it up. So what I thought I would do is I would sit in my chair and put you over my shoulder and show you um, sort of it in action and then give you my thoughts on, yeah my thoughts on it basically, what I think of it. Okay hopefully that you can you can see this okay and the cameras that are fairly decent angle uh, it was kind of hard to wrangle and I've actually got my oh god I've knocked you sorry I've got my um sort of tripod as it were attached to the Lowry stand um, so here you can see I've got my piece of stitching on here I'm going to need to be careful about moving this because I will wobble you maybe this is not the best idea we'll see how it goes <laughs> Um, so I've got my stitching on here. You can see that my Q-snap that I'm currently using is attached to um, this bar here. So I did what I said earlier. I just un um, unscrewed it and then put my Q-snap in and screwed it back in again. 
I am using a grime guard and I do usually use a grime guard um, when I'm um, working in QSAP anyway um, but I've also I watched a couple of um, reviews and one of the reviews um, talked about using a piece of material um, in this clamp or whatever clamp you have because they do do a corner one as well um, and using that to um, prevent any marks going on your fabric just in case you get any um, there isn't the clamp doesn't look dirty, it doesn't look oily or anything like that, but like anything, you just want to prevent um, any sort of dirt getting on your um, cross stitch. So I've got it on the frame like this. Um, I've got it down quite low at the moment, and it is lower than what I would normally um, have if I'm stitching with it, just because I wanted to get it in shot so that you could see. Um, if I... Um, I'm going to move you a little bit. If I um, loosen um, this thing here god i'm wobbling you i'm so sorry um then i am able to um just swivel this the other way so if you do need to get to the back of your work then that's um something that you can do is just undo that just redo it up um and um and sort of work with it in that particular way. So this is really good for two hand stitching because you can just put in one um, side and take out with the other. Um, so it does make stitching on something um, a lot quicker. Um, you are able to fit a Q-snap in here. When I first was sort of looking into getting one of these, um, I'd seen online that a few people had said that you weren't able to um, use a, a Q-snap with the sort of normal clamp that it comes with. Um, that you would have to buy a corner clamp um, and that's not the case you can fit a, a Q-snap in here really nicely this is an 11 by 11 I think so perhaps if you had something bigger like a 17 by 17 um, it may you may require it may require you to get the um, corner clamp and I think the corner clamp would be better if you had a a, a large frame like an omanac frame or, or or something like that um because that would make working on something a lot bigger it would make your work sturdier so the clamp um as far as i know um sits kind of up here hence the name corner clamp um and then um, it makes your work um, a lot sturdier and i think it sort of works in exactly the same way in certain time in terms of screwing it in and things like that um I am a fan of the stand, definitely. I think it's really simple in its design um, and that's one of the things that I like about it. Um, the plate sort of sits underneath uh, my sofa, so I'm not sitting in my living room at the moment just because it would have been a bit more of a faff to set up the camera. Um, but the, um, the plate at the bottom sits underneath the sofa um, and it's nice and stable. Um, again, I've heard some people say, oh, um, you might want to put like a heavy weight on top of the plate um, if it's um, not sitting under the sofa to, in to ensure that it doesn't go anywhere. And you could do that. I, um, I've only had issues with that when I've sort of pushed this away from myself and wanted to get up. Um, when I've done that, um, then the Lowry stand tends to topple over um, so that it would, might be useful to get something heavy um, to just put on it to stop it from doing that. Um, it's really nice in terms of how you can adjust it for the height and how you can put the extender bar on it and there are lots of nice accessories that you can get with it so you can get thread holders, you can get a holder for your pattern that would sort of go somewhere here and um, you can see that I've um, screwed a tripod to it um if you had a lamp that had like a screw base you could or a clip or something like that um you could put that on the bar um i've seen people put needle minders and things on there um and i think they do some other things as well i'm not 100 percent sure um so yeah i like the fact it's adjustable i like the fact that it comes with lots of um accessories i do find the accessories um quite expensive so for example the extender bar um, that I talked about earlier, um, it is £33 for a metal bar. Um, the corner clamp is something like £70. I could be wrong about that, but from memory. Um, so, you know, if you buy this stand for £100, um, then you are sort of 
initially set up unless you do work on big frames and therefore you would need to buy the corner clamp and unless you do have a sofa with a wide arm and then you would not need to buy the extender bar um so that's something to bear in mind um, about buying it although this particular stand is an awful lot cheaper than some of the other ones that I've seen sort of around you know I've looked at the um Gus's custom creation stand and I would have to order one of those from America and um I think from what I remember or what I've seen they're about $350 or something like that so it's a lot more expensive um, and then I would have to pay obviously customs charges for it to come into the country um I know there are other stands out there um the cheaper versions I have had a cheaper sort of wooden version that I bought off of Amazon and I got rid of that um it just didn't the clamp didn't hold anything at all um so um yeah, I, you know, it swings and roundabouts in terms of, you know, how, whether you do think this is expensive or not. Um, yeah, so those are kind of my thoughts on it. Um, after having had it for a while, I'm kind of finding that I'm not using it as, as much as I should. Um, and that is because the, major the majority of the time I do stitch in hand and actually, therefore, I don't really need it. Um, I'd stitch in a Q-snap if I'm stitching on a piece of Ada that's too stiff or too big for me to work in hand. I, you know, I have massive pieces of fabric for my um, a stitching shelf, but it's it's an even weave and so therefore I can sort of let it fall into my lap but when you've got stiffer aider like this um, I find it more difficult to stitch in hand uh, just because I don't really know how to wrangle the material so working I, I do work in a Q-snap when, when I'm working um, in pieces of Ada uh, on pieces of Ada like this um, but that is becoming less common for me um, I do prefer um, stitching on linen or even weave now who would have thought it you know I was only stitching on Ada when I started my floss tube channel um so yeah um so and I, I like to stitch in hand when I'm working on those um fabrics so I pro I will be get be selling this on um just because I don't think it's something that I will use an awful lot and therefore it's kind of pointless me having it hanging around the house um so but that's no it's not because I don't like it it's not because I don't think it's fit for purpose it's just because for me it's it's not for me it you know I this is not my usual style of stitching and even when I am stitching in a Q snap like this um it's not my go I don't naturally go to this um, and the other reason for that, I have to be honest, is because with the um, extender bar, um, I have particularly wide arms on my sofa. So I have to kind of sit really in the corner of my sofa in order to get to, to kind of get the, the, the right angle. And that can feel a little bit uncomfortable at times for me. So I've kind of not bothered getting this out and I've, I've even not left it in the living room I've left it in my craft room um, and the living room is where I do the majority if not all of my stitching so yeah it has sat in my craft room for a little while and I have thought about I have been thinking about um, the idea of selling it um, but like I said that's no um, shade off of the stand at all um, I do think it's a good stand um, I do think it's something um, if you do do a lot of stitching in hoops and frames and Q snaps um, and you like to do two handed stitching, um, you know, this would be perfect for you, um, especially if you're somebody who is um, buying a stand for the first time and perhaps doesn't want to invest as much money as um, some of the other stands are. Um, maybe you want to get something a little bit more on the beginner end of the market is that right way of thinking of it on the cheaper end of the market I, I don't really know but um yeah that that might be uh, the way to go for you um 
but yeah i think it's a good stand i think it is fit for purpose i do like the way you can adjust it i do like the way that you can buy um different things for it so um i hope this video was useful in some sort of way i haven't sat here and done any stitching um and that's a good thing because i i don't want to knock the um the camera um and i would be doing that if i was stitching so um but you can sort of get the idea of how it works um you know you can turn this and adjust the angle of it and all of those kinds of things um, so yeah i hope this review was useful um let me know in the comments down below have you got a lowry stand um why did you buy it what do you think of it um and if you've got a different stand i'd like you know it'd be great for you to um also leave me a comment with what sort of stand you've got um and how you find it which sort of why you chose it why you like it that kind of idea it will give me um some good um information but also um some other people um can read the comments and sort of have a little look for themselves about what they might want to do um, when it comes to buying a stand and um, so i will um see you in a couple of days time with my um normal floss tube as it were um, but for now have a lovely day and i will see you soon bye